So Brett Weinstein has been talking a lot about uh, about the vaccine and ivermectin as a potential treatment. Sam Harris is very against that. He thinks that the studies do not uh, show it, and any distraction from the need to get vaccinated uh, basically makes puts blood on your hands. Um, and so they've been talking separately, and then Sam made a pointed podcast at Brett. Brett responded. Every one of the comments was like, you guys just got to talk. You just guys got to talk. Mm-hmm. And Sam came out and said he wasn't going to. He would not have him on. Why? He, because you the, now is not the time to be asking questions like this. And he finds, I mean, I was blown away. Two guys that have sat next to each other that have steel manned arguments. I, I presume he has, he calls a friend. He has a lot of intellectual respect for. He will not, I guess, platform him on his podcast and have a discussion about this so that, because what's happening when I listen to both sides of it is like, they are kind of whizzing by one another in terms of the, the, the things that they're addressing and the things that they're skipping. Yeah, of course. Um, it is, they need, if, if, if any resolution were to be to have on this matter, if Sam, I suppose, respected this side and thought it was worth doing, which he is allegedly claimed to do, which is the reason he made the first podcast addressing it, they need to sit down and speak directly to each other in a not asynchronous manner. Well, I don't understand the argument that I'm not going to have a debate person on because I don't want to plot for them because if you think if you've thought about the issue deeply and you are confident that their side isn't well thought out he, then you'll think that it'll even just muddy the waters and it'll just and it'll encourage more for people instance, not to get Christopher vaccines. Hitchens might be too old for a lot of people but yeah. go check out well if you're a theist don't <laughs> check out Christopher Hitchens but if you want to see someone who's not scared to debate the other side Christopher Hitchens would never duck a theist because he always felt like he was going to come in and just smash any of their arguments and make them look inferior to his own arguments, which I mean, not necessarily again, the healthiest interpersonal <laughs> debate style, but he was confident in his side of the argument. So I'm, I'm a, a bit confused if you're very confident that ivermectin is inferior to the vaccine and the science proves it, send your studies to the other person ahead of time so they can review them, sit down and guide them there just show them that they're wrong. I'm I'm really blown away that he won't. And I wish I had the quote because I don't want to mischaracterize Sam. But what I'd written here that I believe is the the reason is that, you know, asking questions in the middle of a pandemic, this is not the time. And because it's, you know, we can't muddy the waters. We need to, we need to stay on message, which is get the vaccine. And I am blown away by the laziness of that argument yeah. because we are always in a pandemic. And Sam knows this. We are in a pandemic of hunger and water crises. And, it, and there are people dying every single day of horrible things. Well, also, even if you just assume this is a special time, this is the time to ask questions about. Well, no, there's, look, there's there's an argument to be like, there's a nuke going off in one hour. Uh, you just shut up and do what I'm telling you so we can find this thing and disarm it, right? That, that there's, there's Yeah, but a, what if a, I want to ask you a question about where the best way to find the nuke? Don't ask any questions. Okay, I think your solution for finding the nuke is inferior to this other method that involves GPS tracking. I should just shut up and not do it, then we might not find the nuke in time. Sure. And, but I mean, the, the other side of that is we might spend 36 minutes determining that you're, that my way is best. So it's been three. That's kind of how I feel. Hard cap it at three. This is what I'm saying. Can't you guys just have a conversation after 16 months that you have to stay on message? This is what I'm saying. Is cra- and this is, my, well, okay. So here's my point. I just gave you an hour. It's been months. This thing's going to go on for years. We're not like, even if a hundred percent of the U.S. was vaccinated, we just have this problem in eight months of new variants coming around and, and having yeah. the same issue. So it's, it's, uh, no, I just, I am you, shocked that, 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 that now is not the time is being employed and that we need to stay on message. It's like from Sam Harris, who I, who I admire. Um, I would love for them to talk. I really just want them to yeah, talk. Yeah. And just to complete the point that I'm saying, like the idea that because people are dying and we need to stay on message is, I, you know, when Sam talks about, and he has in the past, I've listened to the podcasts, the, the uh, people that die every day of malnutrition and malaria and lack of access to clean water. That's a pandemic that's going on nonstop. And if you stayed on message and just said, everybody whip out your checkbooks, whip out your checkbooks, you got to send money, send money, send money, send money, send money. That would, that this, it seems that this argument that he has applies there as well. But when he discusses effective altruism, he allows for, well, what's the best way to do this? Can we, what if we tried this? How much is the right amount? Like he, he embraces this idea of trying to find the best solution mm-hmm. to a pandemic. Uh, and I am i find it really, I, I don't want to be too accusatory here, 
intellectually lazy to to think of this as a totally unique situation that isn't reflected every single day in the the deaths that that the preventable deaths that have occurred every single day and will continue to occur mm -hmm. um and they could be stopped by collective mass action which is sort of the same um it's the same solution for the pandemic is collective if everybody chips in we can stop this and that is also true of you know malaria and mm -hmm. and and other serious problems yeah well so i'm uh, going to get my vaccine today yeah. so uh take that in mind when i say mm -hmm. i think that sam's unwillingness to debate this issue is does not look good for in terms of his faith that his vaccine argument is strong because <laughs> if you're not willing to talk to the other side i think part of that comes from a fear that you're if you thought talking to brett weinstein would result in convincing brett weinstein to go get the vaccine well, he doesn't think that this is what i'm saying yeah. then he would then he would be excited for this opportunity to inform millions of people about the right side of things because as is brett's audience is obviously listening to brett and probably not getting the vaccine mm -hmm. so if you do think this is the right thing for everyone to go get this vaccine the best thing you could do is talk to brett and change his mind yeah, it's, it's, it, look, I don't want to pick apart his argument without him here, but it seems inconsistent because he talks about how you have these people, but then he mentioned that he was at this restaurant. There was these young waiter podcast listener style people that were unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. And presumably he doesn't think that they're all crazy zealots. Like he thinks that they're podcast listeners who are interested to a degree in, in some intellectual conversation debate. Uh, the fact that he doesn't think that he would make inroads, that, that, while simultaneously, you know, that, that, that they are stuck in this way, that they want, that they are religious in their, their yeah, especially if, if he knows Brett, likes Brett, has talked to him in the past. I feel like if this is how you feel. Then the best thing you could do is convince Brett that the vaccine makes a ton of sense and then have him get it and tell his audience. And then you would have made a change in millions of minds. Yeah. Well, I guess, okay. To, to defend him, he's unsatisfied with Brett's response to his thing, but I guess he can't see that his thing his initial podcast was uh, didn't steel man, didn't address the deepest yeah, yeah. considerations. And Brett's response to his didn't direct, uh, probably didn't address the deepest criticisms. You know, like they, they addressed, I think both of them, the, the easy pickings mm -hmm. off of the other one. And when they were picking apart the other side, yeah, they picked the weakest parts and said like, he pointed, one thing that Sam said was Brett pointed to this Twitter thread and this Twitter thread was really bad. And it's like, Brett made a throwaway comment about this. Like, <laughs> this is not the guts yeah. of his argument. And I'm sure it cuts both ways. You know, I'm not saying that Brett is, uh, this is what happens when you don't sit down in front of someone and aren't held accountable immediately to the things that you're saying mm -hmm. and to the, to the relationship as it's developing. So it's a, it's a real bummer. Justin, get them both on the podcast. <laughs> Brett will sit where Charlie's sitting. Sam will sit where I'm sitting. You'll moderate. <laughs> Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.